Hey folks, dude here. A little bit of a sticky wicket. You know, there's people that try to do these retro builds, and they want to basically make something that looks uh, very much like your classic M16. Read like your Colt 601, 602, 603, 604, 605, 606, and 607. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Google any of those numbers. The 603 and the 607, I think, being the two most prevalent. So what that is, is that it's going to be either a slab side receiver, meaning there's going to be no charging handle and no four assist, obviously. That's going to look right because the charging handle is going to be a triangular style of charging handle on the very, very early vintages. And, of course, for the Ford assist, there ain't one. It's what's known as a slab side. There is no charging handle there and there's no cartridge deflector. We are talking a1, not A2. So basically your classic, you know, you know, let me just pull what I euphemistically and jokingly refer to as my dedicated 22 upper. Now you can see this one's a incorrect upper receiver because it has got the brass deflector and it has the Ford Assist. Notice though there is no uh, bolt carrier group on board and there's no charging handle. What I normally do is I normally pop off a spare charging handle, pop it into this guy, and I run a Siner or an Ageson conversion unit. Reason being is this is a classic and correct pencil barrel that is 1 in 12 diameter. So what's going to happen is it's closest that I can find to that classic 1 in 16 diameter, which is going to be, well, I'm saying diameter jokingly because, you know, that's actually rate and twist. The, the reason being is if you have too fast, uh, well, I'm going to just throw this guy down here. If you have too fast to twist, what's going to happen is, is that, got crap away. What's happening is, is that the bullet is getting spun up too fast, especially 22 long rifle. It is a non-jacketed bullet. It's dead soft lead. And what's happening is, is you're trying to spin it too fast. And it's just sort of trying to take a turn too fast in a car. It's skidding down the bore. It's supposed to get in a good grip. It's just kind of going, and grabbing a little bit. But it's stripping lead off the bullet as it's going down the length of the bore. Now, euphemistically, and well, not even casually stating it, this is not a 223 bore. It is not correct for a 22 long rifle. It is correct for a 223 slash 556, which is a 224 jacketed bullet. Big difference between the two. Jacketed bullets actually are very much more forgiving for kind of sloppy bores, kind of, you know, pitted up bores. They'll still grab a hold and they'll still actually get spun up a lot better than a dead soft lead bullet. When they refer to something as letting up the bore, that's what's happening. Now, it is kind of me just, you know, kind of glitzing and going on a little bit. But I'm trying to stay on subject here about being, you know, like a retro builder. The ins and outs of this stuff is re damn ridiculous. I mean, even going to the point of, like, you know, the grips. The grip is actually, that is actually a correct grip. This is actually a early, early, let me throw a little light on the subject here. This is an early early A1 style grip and you can see it has a little bit of like, like like a grain structure to it even going through the paint and yes that is paint what's going on there is the paint is covering the color which is actually a green when these things first came out the stocks were either green brown or painted black now also this is another incorrect item for a later weapon because these were deleted which was known as the sling uh, the, the sling uh, holder guys, I mean, they actually intended these things to have a sling in the grip and a sling up front, you know, with these two sling swivels. The grips actually could carry, that's another thing I really like about these uh, these old style forends, the, the weapon system will stand by itself. Now, the kicker is, uh, these sling swivel setups were early, and the reason being is because people held them, and I actually have very big hands, I mean, it's almost to the point where a pinky barely fits on the grip. So that was deleted because more people than not really couldn't fit onto these grips. And they said, okay, well, you're not going to slip off the grip. That's why the later ones have a finger rest on them so you can actually get good purchase and not have the gun slip out of your hands. I really like these. I mean, my hand tends to crawl up a little higher. But for me, because my hand is crawling up higher and it's more into the lower receiver, I'm getting a better purchase on my pad on my finger, not the joint, which is what you don't want, but the pad on your finger is controlling the trigger. Especially if you have a better trigger on your weapon system, you will really notice that and it will pay huge dividends. Now, the other problem with the, the retro builder thing is, you know, case in point, these 
triangular hand guards. If you find them, buy them as a set. Even if a couple of these little vent guys are broken, buy them as a set. You will find the right ones everywhere. The left ones are very, very hard to come by. Now, personally, I really like these grips. Uh, these are like my absolute favorite. <coughs> Excuse me. They're like my absolute favorite for two very good reasons. One, the human hand is basically built to be like a triangle. So you get this thing, you locked in place, it feels right. The other thing too is flat bottom, as evidenced by that. It's not budging. Now the other thing too is also these only fit in the triangular end caps that's right behind the gas block, you know, front sight base. These only fit into that style of you know, unit. The later ones are round, but the cool part is the later hand guards, which are these guys, and you have two of these, and these stack vertically. These guys stack horizontally. They slide in from side to side. You see the notch? The, I'm sorry, the slot is on the top. The slot for this one is two halves, and these are cool because they're universal. They will fit in the round ones, and they'll fit in the triangular ones. Only problem is, it is a round surface. For me, being large-handed, it, it's okay. I mean, when I was issued the, the M16A2 when I joined the Marine Corps in the early 80s, I had an M16A2. As a matter of fact, it was probably like the second or third cycle to get that M16A2, and it was pretty. It was, well, it was damn near new. Uh, of course, it had the little piece of sheet metal in there, so you can't put the thing in burst mode. And it was a burst weapon. It was not full auto. It was a burst weapon. m 16 was a full auto machine gun. You know, hold the trigger down, blow up, blows out the bag, you're done, burp, burp, bang, bang, done. Now, the cool thing is, is there's a lot of parts out there. The bad thing is, because there's a lot of information out there, you find out all kinds of parts that you probably don't even really need and you would never even know is in the firearm. Case in point, the grip screw for the earliest M16s, and I think actually it was the Armalites, but the earliest M16s actually had a grip screw with a hole drill from side to side that bisected the slot on the actual screw itself. Reason being, what did Armalite do? Armalite was a branch of Fairchild Industries, which means they made planes. Planes have, you know, everything has to be safety wired. So you take a screw or a bolt or something and you screw it into the plane. As soon as you screw it down, there's a slot, you know, or an, you know, an actual bolt head that you've now tightened down. There is a hole drilled through part of that bolt that you run a wire through that ties off to something else. And then what you do is you basically take that wire and you put tension on it so the bolt can't vibrate and start unscrewing itself. Those screws, I've seen a few, and they are insane. If you ever find one of those screws on eBay, it is a probably $90 to $150 screw. Are you screwed buying it? Probably, because the reason being is once you put it in the grip, you can, bla you can brag to your friends going, yes, I have the appropriate style parts all over this firearm, and blah, 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 and the guy's going to look in the grip with the flashlight going, eh, I'm really not seeing it, dude. No, 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 truly, it's got a hole in the side. You have to, you know, you'll have to remove the screw to see it. So then this jack hole basically then takes a screwdriver to unscrew the screw and show it to his buddies that's got a hole through it, saying, see, I got the bragging rights, I got the right screw in there, and he puts it back, and of course he's unscrewing and screwing it. It's, it's freaking stupid. But some of this stuff is easy to make the weapon look correct. You know, the, the pistol grip, for instance, okay? That, that's, that's very easy, okay? The hand guards, that's very easy. The correct upper receiver is very, very, well, not easy, but it's common, okay? You can find them. The actual barrels themselves read like the barrel, the correct front sight base, the correct front sight itself, which is not square, but round, uh, all kinds of little fiddliots. And the other thing, too, is this is actually, this is just a slip over I put on there just because I was being cute. But you know what? I'm sure I'm going to have them purists going, dude, that's not that much of a pencil barrel. You better prove that. So guess what? I'll just prove it for you right here and now that this is a pencil barrel. See, it steps way, way down, and then it flares out. That is a 625 diameter barrel, folks. And those who are in the know, know of which I speak. So it, it's actually the correct thing. And the reason why I put this slipper over on there is because, you know what? It's a 20-inch barrel, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. We all know that a 20-inch barrel is bigger than a 16-inch barrel. So it kind of looks a little goofier. But you know what? If I put this on there, it almost looks like I got like an XM177, which is actually kind of cool. 
So you know what? I just really did it for the look. The slip-on is not anything better than the regular one. It's kind of like a birdcage. It's got holes all the way around. So you know what? It's really not going to be that big a deal. This is more of a play toy plinker kind of thing. Of course, 22 ammo prices being what they are, I'm really not shooting it a lot now. But you know, the reason why I'm actually you know putting a flat top upper on here as opposed to the correct upper, again, it's a play toy. But if you guys are doing these retro builds and you're trying to find these parts, you have to reach a point where you say, okay, it's nine tenths and I don't need to go ten tenths. There's a, there's a lot of people out there that will go to like the absolute nth degree. Now, case in point, if I was to do a build, uh, I would probably go, you know, Nodak Spuds. You know, so Nodak, North, North Dakota is actually who it is. Nodak, Nodak Spud is actually a company that makes unbelievably accurate lower and upper receivers if you want to make a retro build to make the thing look correct now in terms of the actual barrels themselves give me about half a second here I gotta click one of my links but there is a company that is actually still making the correct style pencil barrel now the pencil barrel itself is really not so much of you gotta have but if you're gonna do the build and you want the thing to look correct there is actually the parts out there and um, there's a company called DEZ, so Delta Echo Z Zebra, Delta Echo Zebra Arms, so DEZ Arms, so DEZArms.com, and they make an AR-15 20-inch series 2 A1 retro pencil barrel with 1 in 7 twist. Now, that's not the correct twist rate, but you know what? If you're looking for something that actually does look correct, this is going to be your toy. Now, it's about 200 bucks. And they do make them. I think there is another company that actually might still be making a 1 in 9 pencil barrel. If you're just running, you know, heavier bullets versus, you know, lighter bullets. And the thing is, the, the 1 in 12 barrel really does not stabilize stuff that's heavy, okay? The 62 grain bullets, uh, you know, anything above, like, probably like 57, 59, 58... 60 grains, you're really kind of toeing the line there. And of course, the thing is, trying to find bullets for the AR-15, there are so many bullets out there that are 55 grainers, you will not have a problem finding a 55 grain bullet in which to feed your 1 in 12. Now, if you're running a 1 in 7 twist, it does not like light bullets. It is overstabilizing them, so you run a chance with this high-intensity little cartridge here of the bullet going out about you know 10, 12 feet in front of your gun, just going like, poof. And I've seen it happen, man. It's like literally the gun fires, the gun fires, the gun fires, the gun fires. Guy goes, I gotta be missing the target. Somebody like offsides goes, No, dude, you're not missing the target. What's happening is you're seeing a bullet go out and I'm seeing this splash. Cause literally you see this little gray cloud just go piff. The bullet just comes out. It's so, so, so super spinny in speed. I'm being a little snotty there. It is so overstabilized that the centrifugal force and the centripetal force just pulls the bullet apart. The the jacket eventually fails, and of course the lead just goes poof. And I've seen it, man. It looks like somebody's just shooting gray clouds in front of the gun. It is crazy looking. Looks like you have a muzzle flash with some smoke, and then it looks like somebody just shot a you know like a black powder gun a little ways in front of the, the firearm. It is absolutely insane to watch. And you'd swear that dude is missing the target. No, he's dead on. He's actually aiming correctly. It's just the bullets aren't holding up to the task. But the 1 in 7 barrel is way too quick. The other thing, too, is also it's a 625 diameter bullet. I'm sorry, 625 diameter barrel. And it's going to get hot. It's going to get hot really, really fast. There's a very good chance you're overheating your stuff. And these are the things you got to take into account. The classic barrels, if you find a classic 1 in 12, like I found on this one and... I'm not going to name my source, but let's just say I found a couple classic ones, and uh, they got DX'd. Reads like the military pulled them out of service because, you know, they were, like, either uh, excessive uh, gas erosion around the gas port, or they've been fired way too many times, way too hot, and blah, 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 blah. They still shoot, okay? They are still decent enough for a 22 long rifle. They are not match quality barrels. But I'll tell you what, man. You put a scope on this thing, you start shooting 22 long rifle... It's actually still fairly accurate. It, it's it's scary. This thing actually still shoots, but it does. So I've had some fun with it in the past, and uh, it's a plinker. But in terms of the actual build, you guys have to figure out where your stopping point is for saying it's, well, it's close enough. Because some people really just take it too far. I'm not going to spend that kind of money for some stupid little grip screw that you're not going to see inside the grip. 
<sighs> oh, well, I'll go break off on this one. Eat good, keep the centering, and as always, always, there's lots of cool parts out there. Check the internet for your best advantage to build the best, well, somewhat similar to what we classically had back in the good old days. See you guys. Urgh!